Hello everyone. Welcome to today's Update Tuesday. I'm sorry I had to get started a little bit earlier, but I'm not feeling the hottest right now. And it started with a headache and now I'm just kind of feeling blah. So I thought I better do this before I really start feeling really bad. And sometimes that happens to me. So if you know me, you know once I start feeling yucky, it goes from bad to worse really quick. So hopefully... This is just a cold and nothing else. I'm going to pull up my video here to make sure. Ugh, sorry, I'm pulling my whole stand over so you can see what's happening. Hi, Aunt Sandy. How are you? So I don't know if you remember this suite from the catalog. It is the Most Wonderful Time product medley. I'm going to get the catalog out here so I can open it up and show you everything. Because I have used a lot of mine because I did a five-part video and blog series a few weeks ago actually it ended but it's on page 39 in the holiday catalog and you get everything here for that $70 you get the stamp set the dies the little tinsel ribbon which I think is fantastic let me see if I can pull that out that little tinsel ribbon it's clear on one side and gold on the other you can see it better obviously up close than in my video here you get the cardstock stickers which there's um seven sheets of cardstock stickers. You can see, obviously, I've used some of mine. Um, you get all these different papers. Let me see how many. I think it's, you get 12 of these gold foil card fronts in the three different designs, and then 48 sheets of the six by six paper. So it is, it is a fantastic set to get, and especially if you want to use this to make all of your Christmas cards, you can easily do it with this set. So today we're only gonna need these two sheets of paper, this, let me see, I believe it's Old Olive. Yes, Old Olive and the real red and white stripe. This one has stars, this is the stripe, but we're gonna make this really super cute, adorable pizza box. Now, in the update that Stampin' Up! said this morning, they send all demonstrators a succeed weekly is what they call it, update and you um they give you a picture and in this photo this is just one of the projects that was in the photo so okay i'm gonna try to adjust my camera a little bit just because i feel like it's a little wonky so sorry if i hopefully i i may not have even adjusted it i don't know i'm too tired to care right now because i'm not feeling like i said i'm not feeling so good so i'm gonna get my paper trimmer out and i'm gonna turn it sideways so it'll be easier for you to see exactly how i'm trimming this so you're going to start with both of your sheets. Hopefully you can still see that pizza box. I think you can. So the first thing we're going to start with is the star sheet. You want to make it three and a quarter. And this is the cutting blade. Three and a quarter by three and a quarter. That's going to be for the top of your box. Make sure I got it all the way through. And then for the sides, I've already cut them, but I just wanna show you this how easy this trimmer works. But these are three quarter inch by three and a quarter inch long, and those are gonna go around the sides. And like I said, in the photo, they used a gold mini pizza box. I didn't have any of those, but I had a lot of these white mini pizza boxes. So I'm like, these are gonna be perfect. And you can't even see the side, excuse me, um, in the photo that they showed us. You can only see the top of it. But I thought, well, since I'm just using the white box, let's just go ahead and put that designer series paper around the side of the box without completely covering it. So that way, if you do have the gold mini pizza boxes, you can do that as well. And then you just have some of the gold showing through on the sides, right? Perfect, I think. So then we'll take this real red and white stripe, Hi Lisa Nall, um, paper, and we are going to cut these one and one half inches wide. So I'm gonna go obviously from this side over here to the one and a half that's on this side. Now there is a one inch on this side and one and a half at the edge, but we don't want quite that far. We're gonna cut two at one and a half inches. And then we're gonna cut them both at four inches. These are going to be for the bow loops that go on the top. It's a lot of cutting. 
I say a lot of cutting, but you have like to cut each part separate. It's not like we can just tie this bow with paper. You can't just tie it. You have to build it. So those are for my loops. And if I can get them to slide off from here. And then for the little tails, as I call them, those are also going to be one and one half, but they're only going to be two and a half inches long. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the two and a half and then I'll cut them, cut this in half because this is already three inches because we cut it at one and a half to begin with. So we'll just cut this in half at one and a half. And these are for my tails. So you know which is which because the loops are longer than the tails, but they're the same width. Now for the little part that goes around the center, that is only gonna be three quarters inches wide. So we'll cut that at three quarters. I'm telling you, I have cut so much paper with this new paper trimmer. It is the best paper trimmer I have ever used. Now I have one from Stampin' Up! from years ago that is a guillotine cutter. And I normally use that for everything, everything. But now that I have this, I've been using this a lot. So now we only want that three inches long. So we're just gonna cut that little tip off. So we've got three quarters by three inches and that's gonna be for the center of our bow. That's it. So now we can get started. And I feel like I didn't bring any of my embossing stuff over here. So when this little part comes, I'm gonna have to grab that real quick. But we'll start with the pizza box, get that folded. So when you get your pizza boxes, here's how they come. They aren't folded, they're just flat, but they're super easy. You can see all of these score lines. All you're gonna do is fold them in on the score lines. Now the inside is glossy because these are food safe. So they aren't gonna absorb like oils and things like that with that glossy. So you could put some cookies in there. I mean, I would still put them in a bag first just because that's the way I am. <laughs> but you could put little candies in these. I'm gonna use these because I'm making these. Obviously two, I've done this one, I'm making another one. I'm gonna use them for gift cards. And just wrap the little gift card maybe in some tissue, put a little bow around, you know, a little ribbon around it. Uh, and these are gonna be just adorable gift card holders. And now, I thought, well, it needs a tag. I didn't make a tag now, but in my um, other series where I did the product medley, I have a tag on there. And so you can use that. So I'm gonna use the snail adhesive to put this on the top. You could use tear and tape, you could use Tombow, but I feel like this snail adhesive holds it just fine to the top here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the sides. And if you wanted to, you could even change it up and put the stripes on the sides, but I'm gonna keep it with the stars because I like those stars. And green is my favorite color, so the old olive is perfect for me for these sides. And I like to go ahead and just get adhesive on all of these pieces and then put them on. I'm kind of a assembly line worker when it comes to putting my things together. If I know I'm making 10 cards, I'm gonna cut everything for those 10 cards at once, and then I'm gonna do each step separately. I'm gonna fold all 10 of my cards first, then I'm gonna put the first layer on all 10 of my cards, then I'm gonna move to the second layer, and I feel like for me, I just work faster and better that way, so. Okay, so now here's the front. Here's your little dilemma. You do have this little um, half circle, you know, semi-circle cut into the box, which is perfect for when you're trying to get your finger in there to lift this open. But because you have this tab here, you don't have to cut. And because this is not gonna cover the entire thing, you just bring it down a little bit. So you can still see, you still got room in that tab. Now, if you have a little half inch circle punch, you can cut that out too. It's up to you. I just didn't feel the need to have to cut that out today because I think it opens just fine, just like that. All right, hi Doris, how are you? So now that we have all of these cut for our bows, you're going to need your paper snips. And mine are underneath my pile of papers to the side here. And what you wanna do, because as you can see here, it kinda of tapers in a little bit. I did that myself. I just took, I just kinda of cut a little taper on there. And I, after I did my first one, 
and it'll be easier to see if I line it up this way. So you can see where that taper is. I'm just gonna cut this off right there. Then I'm gonna flip this over and flip my paper over and I'm gonna make sure all four sides get this little snip so that they will all be Some of them you're not gonna be able to see because I have to turn it this way to be able to cut that little end off. I've got one, two more. I line them up. And of course, once you get started, you're like, where do I need to go? What do I need? But as long as you get all little, all four of the edges cut. Now there's one left, actually two left, sorry. Then you have that nice little shape. And now if you're better than me and you can just cut them and make them the way you want, fantastic. But I kind of, after I do my first one, I want them all to kind of look the same. So there they are. Then you're gonna flip them over this way. You're going to take a piece of tear and tape and just put it right here at the edge. Just put a little piece on one edge. Do the same with the second one. And if you wanted your bow with candy canes or one of the other designer series papers, that's fine too. I'm just following what was in our email this morning. And now take your pick tool, use that to get that adhesive backing up. I love using this for that. It's perfect. It's one of my favorite things about that take your pick tool. And then just kind of fold them, but leave this rounded. Don't like fold, squish it because you, you want that loop there. So there you got two good loops. You're gonna take one of these loops and put another piece of tear and tape right on the top of it because you wanna stick these two loops together for that bow. It's so easy, it's almost crazy that I didn't come up with it on my own. But after I saw the picture, I was like, I can do this, I can make this bow, super easy. Hi Angie, how are you? So just stick your second bow piece right on top. There you have the top of your bow. You can make either side the top, it doesn't matter. Now, with this little piece, you only, I'm doing, I did tear and tape for the entire bow just because I wanna make sure it stays stuck together really well. And not that I don't think snail will do that, but tear and tape is just a little bit stronger adhesive. You're gonna put a little piece at each end and obviously definitely Tombow glue would work, but then we would have to wait for it to dry while we're trying wanting to put it together. So we didn't, I didn't wanna wait for it to dry. I wanted to be able to put this together and show you exactly how to do it. I'm gonna put all of these measurements and I know we did measure while we were um, doing the um, cutting, I'm still gonna put all these so they'll all be written down. So tape it here, they'll be written down on my blog. Sorry, I'm losing track of what I'm doing. Then just kind of roll it around and don't squish it too much because you kind of want it to be a little bit lifted up, right? So there's that part of your bow. Now, again, I'm gonna cut these both at the same time on this one side. We're gonna do the same, we're gonna kinda of taper this. I'm gonna flip them around, get this second side tapered, flip it this way, get this side tapered. And there you have for your bottom, for your tails. But then you're just going, to, I just take, I just go into about the center. Doesn't have to be perfect, you can always fix it. You can always use your banner triple punch if you want to. I'm getting pretty good at doing this without my banner triple punch, I'll be honest with you. But I still like to use that punch if I'm doing a lot of these. But since I'm just doing these two for this bow, but if I was doing like, like I said, 10 of these, I would totally get that banner triple punch out to do these. So now flip this over. I'm gonna put a piece of tear and tape on this side because this side is gonna be facing up and it's gonna be hooking to the bottom of the bow. 
And again, I'm telling you, I'm loving the tear and tape for this project. Not that I don't love it for other projects, although it's starting to lift up there because I didn't get it pushed down quite hard enough. I'm glad you're doing good, Angie. All right, so I guess I should turn it this way because here's what I want to do. I'm going to layer the bow pieces on top of each other first. Then I'm going to take this bow and just kind of lay it on the top of those bow pieces and put your finger inside the loops to push down. So now you've got that hooked together there. Take some tear and tape again. This time I kind of cut it before I stick it down. And I just put a couple pieces actually right on the back of these bows. And I could have done this before I even attached it. That probably would have been the wiser thing to do, but I didn't. And then go ahead and peel that adhesive backing off both of these. I'm telling you, if you do not have a take your pick tool and you're gonna be doing a lot of crafting, you need a take your pick tool. You really need one, it's perfect. Does anyone have this medley? Are you gonna be making maybe one of these boxes later after you see my video? All right, stick that down. All right, admire that for 10 seconds while I walk across the room and get my supplies to do the sentiment. Again, I forgot to bring all of this stuff over to the desk because I'm kind of on the fly here since I'm doing this a little bit earlier than I planned. All right. So I've got my supplies. I got my heat tool. I have my, get my heat tool plugged in. I have my stamp, which has the sentiment, hope you have a wonderful Christmas. My Versamark ink. I do have my embossing buddy here because you want, always want to use that before you emboss just because you do not want to end up with embossing powder in places that you don't want it. And I thought I, sorry, I already had a little scrap of basic black here, but I can't see it. So I just cut a new one. So I'm just gonna take this embossing buddy and I'm gonna do it actually here on this paper. Just gonna emboss and it leaves a little bit of white residue. Mine does because it's got a lot of white powder on it. And then it will come off after we're done, but it will keep that whisper white embossing powder from sticking to the black paper where you don't want it to stick. Once you have that on there, going to turn around you're going to set this on the table behind you because you don't want to knock it over and you have too many other things <laughs> next to your desk that you can't even set it on the floor next to you okay so I'm going to get the heat tool we're going to heat it and melt it um, I'm going to talk a little bit louder so hopefully hopefully you can still hear me but you know you want to wait you'll watch it as this heats up because it's this wasn't heated up to begin with so it's going to take a second for it to heat all the way to melt that embossing powder and I know it's hard for you to see where you're at but I don't want to hold this with my fingers because I will burn my fingers because this gets very hot and that's it that's already melted perfect right ta-da so now that it's dry just kind of wipe it a little bit and that white powder comes off but the fantastic thing about this is we don't need any of that part where that little bit of white powder stayed on the edge anyway. We're gonna cut all the way around it. The only part of this sentiment that we're going to keep is the have a wonderful Christmas, but we're gonna cut out each letter or each word, not each letter. Each letter would be a real treat, right? You can see me try to get dimensionals on the back of those letters. That would be amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong, I could probably do it, but I don't wanna do it on camera because you might hear a little bit of cursing along the way. Okay, so the hope you, I don't need that. We just want the have a wonderful Christmas. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some pieces from the side here and I'm gonna move that because I want these longer pieces right here. I'm gonna snip this. There's three, and then I can probably get one right here. I guess I probably only need three, but then you take those little pieces, flip your words over. 
Actually, I will need two for this one, so I'm glad I cut three because wonderful is a little bit longer. Stick those pieces on the back of your words. I think I can get away with one on Christmas and definitely one for have a. And then just peel that adhesive backing off. I've got one stuck here to my to my work area. It's usually how it happens. Okay. So get that peeled off. I would totally love it if you're watching now and if you're watching the replay later, do a watch party. Show your friends, show them how to make this and then get the supplies and get together and make them. It's totally a fun project. It's much easier after you have all of the, um, you have all of the directions and again, upside down, I grabbed it upside down. So you've got have a wonderful, and again, upside down, Christmas. Now you can move them around however you want. I did it a little different on this one than I did on this one. It doesn't matter, it still looks great. So we're gonna embellish with some of the gold faceted stars that come in this um, medley. And we're going to embellish with these fantastic stickers, the holly and berries. I don't want that stuck to the top of the letters. I want it to kind of go under. There we go. That's another fantastic thing about this tool is that you can use it to manipulate different things while you're working, so it's great. Okay, so now this one is gonna kind of hang off the edge. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take that embossing powder and kind of get, sorry about my arm and the camera, this edge with that embossing powder, now that is no longer sticky. So when you put this on here, what is hanging off the edge doesn't have sticky on it anymore. It makes it look really fancy because you got that little bit of dimension with it sticking off, but you don't have any stickiness, so it's not gonna stick to anything, which is great. We're gonna need a couple more of these smaller holly because that you kind of want them here on the bow. Take your, take your pick tool, get a couple of these stars to add a little bit of sparkle to the top since I did not have the um, gold pizza boxes. But even if you do have the gold pizza boxes, you can still add some of these gold faceted stars to the top. Hi, Aria, how are you? Hope you're doing well. But there you have it. There is the little there, that one little corner wasn't quite folded in. I was like, why does this not look right? It looked a little wonky. But there you have it. There is the mini pizza box decorated with a paper bow that we just created ourselves. I just think these are fantastic. They're gonna be used for gift cards. So if you get this in the mail, feel really lucky because <laughs> this is something I just handmade. So I hope you have a great rest of your evening. I am going to post this video um, on my blog and then I'm going to put my blog link up so you can get all of the measurements and written instructions. Thank you for joining me. Have a great Tuesday and I will see you tomorrow for One Card Wonder Wednesday. Bye!